Last week on the season. Atlanta Corporation. One, two, three. Ah! I'm scared to look at it. Good, 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 Mike. Good angle. Good eye discipline. And you see him off the field coaching up the young guys. He just, uh, he loves Ole Miss. He loves football. You couldn't ask for a better guy out there. That's what I'm really embracing. That's what I'm really working on is becoming that leader on and off the field. And here's the punt, and it is blocked. The Rebels do finally get one. Going to see Luke coming off the edge over here. You knew it was going to happen. Hey, 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 you have no idea how big that was. You have no idea how big that was. It wasn't pretty, but, but it's a win. You can tell we got to just learn from our mistakes, man. But congratulations to you, 4 and 0. We got a trip to the swamp coming next next Saturday night. All right? All right. Rebels are renowned for their hard-hitting land shark defense. So it should come as no surprise that defensive coordinator Dave Womack can throw a good jab himself. Y'all know this is my favorite song, don't you? I don't like it. Well, I figured if I liked it, you wouldn't like it. <laughs> what number are you wearing this week? 38? We've only been doing this for three months. We've only been doing this three months. I just want to explain that question now. Oh, okay. Well, I was going to take it away from him if you played like you did last week. <laughs> but when it comes to preparing his players for game days, Womack doesn't pull any punches. Sit. Hit. Oh. Don't forget to gather, man. Here we go. Sit. Hit. That boy, 20. Good. Stay on that back. Come on. Be sure. Talk. 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 Fit, 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 fit. Communicate. Do your job. Go, 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 go. Keep getting better. Keep getting better. Play with your eyes. Play with your eyes. Put your eyes in the right place. Watch the mesh. Look, 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 look. Y'all see this? It's telling you something. Here we go. Look, 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 look. Oh boy, I way to move 20. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had a boy 20. Good speed. Good speed. All right, everybody up here. Hey, listen to me. Make sure that we are taking care of business and using all our resources academically. Everybody hear me on that? Sir. We need to have a really good GPA this semester. Real important right there. All of that. Hey, elevate better, your fella. focus, baby. Elevate your focus. Yes. We go as far as we want to go. Domination on three. One, two, three. Domination. Domination. Today we did an interview with WTVA, uh, Newswatch 99. Yesterday we did print interviews with AL.com, Clarion Ledger has called, and now the season. The night that uh, Ole Miss beat Vandy, now I said we hear Gainesville PD has jokes. Right like that, they responded back. <laughs> and they came back and said, so you want to come to our house, meet Officer Williams? He's one of our small guys, 6'8", 315. That's much a man. You come at them with, hey, Gainesville, since it's fall, y'all may want to break out your warm, warm winter clothes. Uh, it's in good fun. It gets to show our uh, our spirit. It's awesome. Never had any idea that it would blow up like it is, so uh, it's just great for us and our community. You need a full-time job, Lieutenant Tweeter. <laughs> <laughs> Who's winning? That's not even a question. Dear Oscar Police, I believe this belongs to you. Hashtag King of Twitter Burns. <laughs> That's <laughs> nice. The Angel ain't holding a candle to it. Get Bishop, he's a Florida alum. I'm gonna be pulling for the Gators, but who do I think is gonna win? I think it'll be Ole Miss. <laughs> the response that they know that we're coming now. Uh, they've already used the uh, Mississippi backwoods, running water, electricity, so eh. Some Gator fans are really trying their best. Most of them aren't hitting the 
the mark. All right, we're going to sign off, heading to Florida. To understand where Rebel linebacker Christian Russell wants to go, you must first understand where he's been. Being bad as a kid, you know, I was getting suspended a lot, going to alternative schools and fighting, and everybody kind of looked at me like, oh, you know, it's Christian, yeah, he's going to be bad. When I actually got into football, it was kind of hard, you know, telling my family, like, hey, I'm really, you know, playing football in middle school. And I remember I was starting uh, freshman, my ninth grade year. All my family came out, my mom, my auntie, and everybody was so shocked, like, to see me, like, pretty good. From that point on, man, you know, I just, it was just like a 360. I changed my life, did it through all my senior, junior year, sophomore, freshman in high school, then losing my mama that senior year, you know, that was just, everything just kind of took its own little turn. My uncle told me, he was like, yeah, um, your mom been in a car accident, you need to come with us. I was like, cool, you know what I'm saying? I asked him, was she okay? He was like, yeah, we're going to see her. So I'm the last one to come to my house. All I see is my aunt coming out to me like, she gone, she gone. And she was like, Faye dead, she dead, Blue, she dead. I looked at my brother and he just, you know, hugged me real tight. And it's like my breath was just took out my body. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? I couldn't believe it. They told me that, you know, they both died, instant impact, got hit by the embankment and just, it was over with after that, so. I mean, like, it was just like, life was just all coming to an end. Like, all the stuff I wanted to do to see my mama, you know, have a good life, it was just like, all taken away from me. And I was like, well, what you gonna do now? And so I was at a point like, man, I ain't, I ain't wanna do nothing. I ain't wanna play no ball, I ain't wanna go to school. I ain't wanna talk to nobody about it. I didn't, I was just so shell. I did this because I wanted to take care of my mama. Now my mama's gone, now what am I doing it for? Heartbroken and ambivalent, Russell would channel his pain directing it toward the football field. He went through uh, that phase after losing his mom where uh, he was sort of uh, sort of down, you know, in, in a dark spot and uh, uh, has uh, come out of that spot and uh, is doing well. So for me to sit there and and give up and just stop, with, like I basically just slapped my mom in the face basically. Like, cause all you taught me and all I seen you grow through and all the adversity I seen you face, you never gave up, you never quit. We good, baby, let's keep fighting, baby. This is what we do, man. Let's keep fighting, baby. Keep fighting, baby. We still in it, man. We good, baby. This is what we do, man. I've uh, thought often uh, that, you know, he could come in here with a with a sour puss, bad attitude, so to speak, uh, on, on a lot of days. But, but he chooses to come in and be upbeat, and he chooses uh, the high road. He's that guy that is always talking to his teammates and, and getting them fired up on the sidelines. He's just saying, um, you know, he's kind of stepped up his role as a leader on this team, and uh, he's a voice that the guys respond to. You know, you got to wake up and tell yourself, it's going to be a good day. <laughs> it's sunny outside, ain't no more rain. We out of here. Come on, let's go. Let's go, baby. Last us baby. Let's go. Three and out now. Three and out, man. Be alert, baby. His positive attitude and energy that he brings to the field, they're going to be, you know, very positive for the people that are around him. We playing for each other out here, man. And when you got that in your mind, you can ball, boy. Let's, let's do go. it, man. Let's go. I remember one day we was in the team room and it was Thanksgiving and Coach Freeze asked me, well, well, Christian, what are you thankful for? And I told him, I said, well, Coach Freeze, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to be a part of this team. He's easy for me to talk to, easy for me to coach, uh, because I think he really wants to be uh, not only a good player, but a good person. With what's happened to him in his life, he, he doesn't use any excuses. He, he chooses to go forward in his life and, and, and to try to become a successful young man. It's kind of crazy, man. Like, I'm finna graduate college this year like me. <laughs> Christian Russell is like finna, you know what I'm saying, graduate D1 college. And it's just all a blessing. And you know, great coaching staff, a coach who really cares about you, just not on the field, off the field, you know what I'm saying? So becoming a better man, becoming a better husband, a better boyfriend, whatever it is in life, helping you to be everything you can be, man. So it's a, it's a great blessing to be at Ole Miss, man. I'm so happy to be a Rebel, baby. Welcome to the swamp, baby. Stairs this way? Stairs. Stairs. Around the corner behind the van. This place is amazing. And I'm here. Hey guys, 
Oh, eight. Does it matter who the eight is? No. Uh, I can get you five. That'll, that'll, that'll bring this elevator to a Oh, Hattie. I'm tired from walking up all the stairs. You walk? Yeah. I was on my set and you were taking the elevator. No, I'm out of breath. It's back in the home front, the home lane. Who, who got in front of you getting on the elevator? Oh, everybody. You know, like, all those big linemen. They're too lazy to walk. I was just talking to the kickers, and they both put the stairs up here, and they said it was because the linemen nice. moved them out of the way. Because they know better to get on there with us. A lot of beef, a lot of man, a lot of heat. Lots of men. Lots of men. Lots of men, right? <laughs> kickers take the stairs. Yeah, got to. Yeah. Or you're going to be last. Yeah, it, it is. is. Kickers are always last. It's a very cruel world. Well, it was nice chatting. we got to go get dinner now. Sure. See y'all fellas later. See you in the swamp tomorrow. It's game time. Three of the last four visits to Gainesville have resulted in upset wins for the Rebels. Their most recent trip, in 2008, handed the Gators their only loss in a national title winning season. For decades it seems like we come down here, Florida's in the top five, Ole Miss is kind of hanging around trying to be in the top 25. Well that script now has switched and flipped yeah. and it's the Rebels everybody's chasing and Florida gets their shot today. I mean, we knew it was going to be loud. You know, we knew we knew the crowd was going to be rowdy. You know, a top 25 matchup, a night game in the swamp. You know, you, you can't beat an atmosphere like that. It's still an environment that you that you enjoy playing in as a as a player. And so uh, going into it, uh, you know, challenging the guys to to execute, do their assignments, and uh, understanding that uh, there's a small margin of error. For 60 minutes, you get after them. Run plays, you be physical. Defend the pass. They throw it to you, intercept the thing. You understand me? Catch it. First, you catch it and run, take it to the house. Don't get it confused. There's a fight waiting every single Saturday, and tonight you're gonna be tested again. Nathan Noble to kick off. Brandon Powell is deep for Florida. Here we go. For the first possession of the game, the Rebel defense would look every bit the part of one of the nation's best. Pistol formation takes the snap, hands it off straight ahead, stacked up right at the line of scrimmage by Mike Hilton, who penetrated and made the hit. Ole Miss will blitz, quick throw out in the flat, not much gain there, and it's going to be third and long. Here he talked about getting Florida off the field on third downs. Let's see if the Rebels can do that. Gun formation for Greer. There's the snap, pressure up the middle. He's hitting the backfield, going to run and tackled behind the line of scrimmage by Marquise Haynes, and the Rebels have a great opening stop. Everybody in college football knows that first possession is really the money possession of the game. You know, if you can go out, get a three and out defensively or go on your first drive on offense and score, you know, that can change momentum quickly. And it did for us, you know, um, that, that first drive, we really just came out with a lot of motion, a lot of energy. We knew that's something we had to pick up and we did on that first drive. The guys executed, uh, the, the emotion was there, uh, the focus was there. And uh, I think we got the uh, got the results, uh, you know, that we wanted, where we ended up having some big plays, and, and uh, yeah, everybody was locked in. They were locked in and ready to play. While the defense would make a statement early, the offense would stumble out of the gate and spend the majority of the first half trying to find their way. Kelly brings the man in motion and snapped over his head. He goes back and recovers it. A 19-yard loss. Back of the line of scrimmage immediately is Ole Miss. The handoff to Walton. Fumbled up in the air and grabbed by one of the Gators in midair. And Florida is in business. It's hard, you know what I mean, kind of come out and get a drive going and then obviously have a bad snap or a fumble or something like that. Just It just kills a drive right at the beginning. When you're playing against a good football team and you're going into a, uh, a tough environment, uh, you can't. Uh, hurt yourself with those things. Too many of those mistakes, uh, it's hard to overcome. The crowd was just feeding off of that, and you can you can tell how it was getting up and up, like the energy bar was just rising and rising and rising. It was when it got really loud on second and third down, it got really, really loud, and you got different people hearing different calls. Someone would hear it, and then four other people wouldn't hear it, and trying to get everybody else on the same page, it was, at some points in the game, it was really tough. And you gotta try and do something to get this crowd to calm down just a little. They're loud, aren't they? Quick pitch near side, a little bubble screen caught at the 40 and then breaking free to get the first down on second effort is Robinson, a missed tackle. He had him behind the line of scrimmage, but he let him squirt free. The play before the touchdown, it was a, uh, I think it was a third and five. We should have, um, we had we had to tackle uh, right there. We, we missed the tackle. 
Uh, they got the uh, got the first down. I think that that gave them a little bit of momentum. And the first town, first uh, you know, first and ten, and ball midfield, uh, they they took a shot. There's a play action. Greer to throw. He's hit as he launches it downfield, and the pass is going to be caught and in the end zone. Touchdown, Florida. It's Demarcus Robinson. Two Rebels in the area. They couldn't make the play, and the Gators strike from 36. And Greer was hammered on the throw, but Tony Bridges and A.J. Moore couldn't break it up. Well, David, he hung it up. I thought the Rebels had a safety back there. I thought they had plenty of time to get there, but the, the deep safety just overran it, really. And, hey. They scored that touchdown. That momentum shot up to like 100. percent They had it was telling themselves, you know, now we can compete with them. You know, negative plays compound on each other. You know, like I said, we gave up a touchdown, so if it makes it feel like the offense have to come down and score, and you know, puts a little more pressure on them, and they kind of threw them off when they had the fumble, which put us put us back in a bad situation. They fake it to him, wide open, touchdown, McGee. It's McGee with the catch. It wasn't the old fake. Jump pass by Tebow, but nonetheless, it was the tight end wide open right up the middle, and Florida's up 13 to nothing. When we went to Bama, we got up early, and that crowd kind of sat down for the first couple quarters, and not Florida. I mean, we got in there and we started playing, and they, you know what I mean, they, they got amped up. There's the snap back to Greer, dumps it right over the middle. He's got his man caught, breaks two tackles, the 30 to 40 down the sideline is Brandon Powell, and he is gone. Looks like nobody will catch the speedster. He takes it to the house, and the Gators are up 19 to nothing. We came out one way, and now we're about to go out that time. We're good, though. It's a long, we still got another half to play. Just like they put up 19, we can go to the third. I'm just to energy. Second and seven at the 15. He's set to throw again. A down the middle and a strike it is. Callaway, touchdown! It's Antonio Callaway as he ran across the field, caught it, and got two zone blocks deep downfield. And the Gators have put the Rebels in a huge bind. 25 to nothing with 20 seconds to play. Being on the road, we needed to uh, go back out and, and uh, set the tone. Uh, the second half, and uh, and try to uh, and try to get the get things turned around and get the momentum swung. It was nice to get out there and you know what I mean do what we do, and it definitely was a little bit of a confidence boost. You know what I mean, being able to go 15 plays or whatever it was, all the way down the field, and I mean get something on the board. I mean at that point it's just we'll take what we can get. You know, points going to add up. You know, three points, six points, touchdown, whatever. You know, we we just take what we can get and use this confidence and make sure we. In the next possession, just make sure we get more points. Snap back and down. The kick is on its way, and it's good. And the Rebels are on the board, but that's a win for the Gator defense. Yes. Ole Miss used a ton of time all the way to the 525 mark to get three points out of that. The Ole Miss field goal would do very little to slow the men in orange, as this day belonged to the Florida Gators. Fakes with a shoulder hit. Ball goes high in the air, grabbed by the Gators, taken toward the end zone and stopped at the half yard line. He got hit in the back. Come on, come on. Y'all look good right now. I know it sucks, but come on, smile. Get up, let's go. Come on, y'all look good, baby. Y'all look good. Keep your hands up. Obviously, nobody likes losing. That's, if that defines how that season's gonna go or that, you know what I mean, the next couple games is gonna go, then we gotta we got like look at ourselves. But I mean, I was just trying to get those guys fired up and you know what I mean? Let's just try and go out there, get some points and you know what I mean, get out of there with a little bit of momentum and. Let's try and go get back to work next week. It's just because that's all you can do at that point. It's a long season. We have we have a lot of games. Uh, we have a lot of games left. We have everything uh, in front of us still still to play for, and uh, you know it is a uh, it's a game that you can learn from. You can learn from it, see the mistakes that were made, correct the mistakes, and it can help us become better coaches down the road. Uh, help the players become better players down the road. Uh, and, and we learn from it. As long as we learn from it, I think it's a, it's a valuable uh, it's a valuable experience for us. And I think uh, you know uh, everybody's learned from it. You know, we know no game comes easy, no matter who you play, whether it's an SEC opponent or out of conference opponent. So we know we just got to find that juice and that enthusiasm we had earlier in the year, and we we can do that with the type of guys we have on this team.
got outplayed, we got out coached, we didn't take care of the ball, we didn't get any turnovers. It was it was a, a awful night all the way around. Okay? Now, you still control the West. Do you know that? Yes, sir. Now, I want you to hear me. Do you think you're the first team to ever be ranked high to get beat? No. It just happened. We beat we beat Bama the other day. They go to Georgia and respond. So it, it's all on us. But we've got to go to work and get better. We've got two out of conference games to sharpen our saw up before it gets back into the grind. I love you. We still have everything right there. But you have to respond to this the right way. All right. Yes, sir. A difficult night. Uh, they 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 beat us in about every every facet of the game. We didn't take care of the football. I think it was a solid plan, but we certainly didn't execute it, which uh, means we didn't do a good enough job preparing our kids to, to play in this environment. It's been shown the last couple of years we can play with uh, any team in the country. So right now, it's, uh, the main focus is uh, us getting better as a, as a team and taking care of the little things as a team. We gotta do the little things right, you know what I mean? We gotta, gotta line up and just, I mean, get after them, be physical, and have that edge that we had the first couple games. And these past couple games, we haven't had that edge. And now we got to get back to having, you know what I mean, a little bit of like fire in our belly. Yeah, we had the mentality that it's just another victim. So uh, we don't care who we playing no more. You know, we're just going to focus on ourselves. And then the next game comes up, and then whoever that point is, we're just going to try to dominate. We're not going to overlook anybody. We're going to make sure we come, come to play, make sure we bring our A game, and hopefully we can come out with a W on Saturday. Each Wednesday during the fall, tune in for a new episode of The Season. Also, don't forget to download the Rubble Rewards app for a chance to win exclusive prizes.